Okay, I'm not going to try and make this long-winded and drawn out. I've already done a video where I made a pig out of one of these. Opened it. It's helium in anyway, which is not uh, one of the noble gases, so it's not uh, flammable. There's nothing in it, so I can work straight on it. Uh, already done a little bit of tack with a chill. I just need to get the handles off. Again, the decision is going to be uh, I could make that the mouth. Nah, that's gonna go, that, that's gonna have to be an eye. So, hi there. And And an eye there. Right, that gets me. That gets me the pig bit. Fill that in. Too small, so I won't put a mouth on. Uh, four legs. Tail. Cut these in half. Stick on as the ears. Grinder on me, a guard on the grinder. Right. So there's there's my pig. Cut them in half, and with a little bit of chamfering in between, that becomes the ears. You know, like that. If it doesn't look more like a chinchilla than it does a pig. I've just got to put the legs on. I ain't filming that. Hook it up. Four legs on. And it doesn't rock. They're in line. There we go. Pig on its back. Uh, the welding isn't pretty. Uh, I didn't clean. I didn't clean it well enough and the bottle is galvanised underneath this paint so that didn't weld very well uh, it's a little bit better on putting the nose on uh, but I ain't a welder I'm a guy who more likes join tacks together It's time to grind the shit out of it. So with the welds cleaned up, I, I think it's time for me to uh, make this other eye. Dove into me tub of washers. Found a washer there which was almost the right size. So that went over there. Well, I, it'll do that. But it's a bit thick compared to the, I don't know, half a mil, 0.8 of a mil that that is. Um, because this is going to be, because I can, because I want to, I want to duplicate that as good as I can. Right. Uh, we look at that, you can see it's a washer and then it's been formed into and then it has a blowout cap tacked onto it. From a side point of view, it looks a bit like that. You've got the washer, it's formed down, uh, there's a base and then you've got the dome cap in between and likewise that side. So I'm going to try to replicate that. That was just too big. So I'm going to form it out of some sheet steel. 
the base, I happened to find a washer, which was just, just the right size. So that'll be the base. I'll make something out of that. For that, I need to do the dome. I was watching a video the other day, uh, Crafty Panda, and he took a bolt, put it in his drill, ground it against, rotated it against the, the, the grinder and produced a dome. Well, when I was looking in there for a suitable bolt, I found a coach bolt. It's already got a domed head, which unfortunately is too big. Further looking in there, I found a domed head bolt, coach bolt, where for one reason or another, I'd removed the square under the head. So that is ideal. And as you can see, I've already started to do that. I don't think I've done too bad of a job there, but how did I get there? Where'd you lad? So that's the finished product, and I said, how did I get there? Well, What you're about to see is how I got there with what I have in here. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the right tools and there'll be people, engineers watching this. Now you're going, what, what, what are you doing? But I got there. Right. So this is not how to do it. It's just the way I did it, with what I have in here. Uh, for example, if I had a cone drill, the job would have gone a lot easier. But I don't have a cone drill. Although I might address, address that right at the very end. Right. Be entertained. So we, we made that middle piece. So we started off by having a look through there and we know we found a washer just the right size. Which means I need a hole that size. To which I had a route about in all my bits and pieces. Uh, using uh, uh, this old furnier. I needed to find something with which to put a hole that big in something. So I said I had this big washer, but it was too thick. So I decided I needed to make my own washer. I'd found a washer, as I said earlier, which was the right size. So I thought I needed to deform a piece of thin steel, dish the middle out, press the middle out, and uh, make it round. I found some old tin shred, which I cut into squares. So then I drilled a hole in it, and I made that hole bigger. As big as I could, as I said, without a cone drill. But I then need a way to deform that, to form a flange on the inside. I knew that I needed to make the hole the size of that washer, so using this old uh, vernier. I went and I had a search for items with which I could form that deformed washer had a long tapered punch didn't work 
This and this people might recognise, scrappers may recognise, as the uh, the centre out of a washing machine. The burring for the drum runs on those. Uh, they come in very handy for punching things out. I also found in that bunch of steel that uh, I got from that machinist's, this, which is also just, just near enough right. I want it a little slacker because I need some clearance. However, that proved out not to work so well. That shaft proved to be perfect. It was slightly tapered here, slightly tapered here, but it had a square, a rectangle shank. So with a grinder, I managed to increase the tapers and that proved to work out quite well. If I've got my deformation tool, then I need a die. So I had a look amongst the garage to try and find things that had holes in I could use as a die. Then in this section here I have got plenty of gears. None of them proved to be quite suitable. However, when I was searching for a washer in the first place I found these two big square washers. And what would you believe? It was almost the right size. I need a sloppy fit because I need to deform the steel. Next step. So I took my piece that I'd made the bigger hole in and I sandwiched it in between there. Right. You'll notice I've not circularized it yet because that would mean I'd have to have the hole exactly in the center and as I'm doing something like this that possibly won't happen I clamped both washes together and as you can see you now all I need to do is to Go through with these mandrels to make it easy. I warmed them up. So with that suitably warm, I started the process of dishing it. I used a uh, an engineer's uh, ball end and with a rubber mallet, I started the process of forming it through. I then took the, the mandrel, and well you get the drift oh you get the drift bad joke when I'd finished I ended up where I managed to deform the centre downwards okay That was my first attempt, which didn't work quite well because it acted like a, well, actually more like a, a punch and it, it broke it. And there was indeed other failures as well, which is why I originally started just like this, but it found out it deformed the rest of the, it began to dish the rest of the uh, plate, which is why I ended up using a, 
a clamp down top washer. But still, in the end, I ended up with something like that. Sticking that on a homemade mandrel. And spinning it around like I did with the bolt against the bench grinder. So once I'd got that circular, I could weld a washer, tack a washer on the bottom, drop my bolt through, weld that on the bottom, and there I've got my eye. My next step was then to turn that over, over a bigger hole and slightly dish it just by making it a little off center and gentle tapping gave me a slight dish okay if i went too far i was fortunate that the opposite side of that hole was a, was, was a very nice fit so if i went wrong i could tap it flat so that's how i made me other eye I'm just going to make a hole there, that size, and hopefully I get an interference fit. If not, I'll try my hand at uh, soldering or even glue. I'll do that. Right, make that all bigger. Batteries run out. Whoa. Right, I still need to make that all bigger somehow. Having gone as big as I can with the biggest blacksmith drill that I have, I then had to resort to using various uh, cone drills, uh, cone grinders, until I got to uh, a size which is a, a bug's widgey off, so that little tidgy little bit more sanding, and that should be an interference fit, I can tap that in. I might even try soldering it in. Don't look three bad. Till eventually I could fit that in and get pretty much an interference fit. Focus, please. There we go. So compare that to that. Up to that. Uh, why indeed? Well, okay, it, it's not a paid job, right? It, it's a gift. Because it's a gift, I want to do, to do the best I can. It's 45 years ago since I did metal work at school I'm trying to learn how to overcome problems that I see okay there's there is probably specific techniques tools to make the job easier but if you ain't got them what do you do well 
You do it the Ian way. You, you, you get it done. And you try your best just to make it look right. End of the day, this little piggy is going in a, to a little girl. And I want people to think, how the heck did he make that other eye? Well, they can watch the video, can't they? Thing is nearly done. Got the ears to put on, the feet to sort out. I'll explain that in a minute. A slot to put in, to put the money in. Somewhere to get the money out. 